Welcome. I'm Bill Wake. We're here working on a program to compare tunes for similarity. Lately, we've been working on clustering. And with that, we're doing a dendrogram view that gives sort of the family tree or the genetic tree of the tunes we're looking at. Now, we've, we've gotten this thing running on a set of sample numeric data. We need to move it towards working on tunes. And I think also we have some work to do around how it's in the main pipeline. So we may work on the view first, but uh, if you select cluster, I'll unselect it and select it. We've got the view in the main pipeline window now. Um, I'm not sure why that padding is there, but um, but at any rate, uh, this view, we'd like it to be smaller. I, I don't know that the width is going to be a problem, but the height is definitely a problem. We've given it a fixed height of 900 or something like that. And uh, we'd really like to, like to make it, uh, well, we'd like to make it a function of the number of elements in here, you know, that each one gets kind of a line and a half or two lines worth. And we know how many elements are coming in. So we should be able to make the, the vertical size proportional. I'm fine to leave it scrolling. However, as I was pondering all this stuff, I've, I've come to realize that that the model we have for our pipeline is not really a good fit for what we're doing here. So let, let me give an example, and I'm not sure when we're going to fix it or address it, but uh, hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we've got a simple one. We opened a file, and then... Um, Opening a file is what we're calling a source, and Parsons code is what we call a sync, and it gives a report, basically. It says, for each tune in the list, I've listed their Parsons code, this down, repeat, up, down, 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 whatever thing. It makes a little mountain range picture, and I can look at these and see this one's pretty similar to this one, very similar to this one as far as it goes. These two look related, but they're too short but they certainly look close to each other and, and so on, you know, that, that there's some similar and that there's some that are different. This one's going all down, 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 down. Okay. Instead of ups and ups and then a few downs. All right. So the, the way this goes, then we have a list of source objects, a list of potential transformations and a list of analysis objects. And when something changes, like I select something here, um, then the pipeline opens that up and and in basically the, the the running pipeline, if you will, the one on the left is sort of the possible pipeline elements, and this is the actual pipeline. It inserts it inserts it, and as you change this, uh, let's look for Galan. All right, and um, now I've filtered out only songs that have Galan in them. Let's see if I can, I don't know if I can tell. Yeah, here's some, this one's G-A-L-O-N. Okay, now G-A-L catches that, or G-A. Okay, so um, it's updating immediately, all right? The the way we're talking about doing the clustering, the the, when an input comes in, the, the pipeline as a whole says, oh, something changed. Everybody should run again. And it runs them. But this one's acting a little funny because what we want is we want to run it on the input side and then let you select nodes, you know, that, that seem to be clustered together. And it doesn't really have an output until, until you've selected something. Now, we start off selected, so we could just output right away, but we'd like it to be you know, as as these change, we'd like it to to re you know rework it and send different songs down and so on. So it's kind of a filter, you know, just like we looked for Galan. Um, but I don't know. The, there's something funny that, like, well, we're gonna hit that in a minute. We're trying to get the cluster in there, and like you you've got a cluster. Where's that cluster coming from? Well, it's coming from the list of tunes that are coming in. When do you find out those tunes? Well, you find that out when the pipeline runs. And um, we don't have a notion of 
like, well, when, when you change the filter, it just says, hey, rerun the pipeline. But but that would potentially change the nodes as well. And it just it just doesn't fit. I, I think what we need is more of a, more like a, a, what do you call it? Not data stream. It's, you know, um, when an input is ready, it writes to, you know, it, it receives it when it's ready to write to the output, it writes to the output. When anybody else listens to that, they say, oh, my input has changed. I will, um, I will uh, go ahead and update. And upstream ones might not care. Okay, so in this one, if we selected a different node, all the inputs to this shouldn't matter, but but this one should be going like, oh, I've got new data values, and the downstream ones should should find out. Now I'm uh, I don't know the right way to go here. It, it maybe we can kind of work around it. Well, okay, possibilities. So one is we when we do this. We try and make this selection persistent, but boy, if the uh, if the input totally changes, we really should reset. So I don't know how we'll know if it resets or not. Okay, but we could we could just sort of like retain the last one. So if we got a new one in, if we got told to update, then we um, apply apply the, whatever changes we had or whatever values we had uh, okay i think that's one thing another thing we could do is say well this isn't really a transformation i think that's a lie you know i've conceived of it as a filter but we could we could treat it more as a sink and then you're just selecting these and then you would i don't know <laughs> it sounds stupid when i say it like Let's write down the, the numbers of these and then go back in and, and look at them in the Parsons code or something. It's, it just feels wrong. It might be an intermediate step, but it feels off. Okay. Now we have another one that's kind of like this is the sound. And the sound lets you select anything coming in and then play it. Yeah. Okay, and but there's nothing can happen to it afterwards. And so it's sort of the same boat. It would kind of like to be a transformation, or maybe maybe transformation's not the right word, but um, in a way, the sink is artificial. It just says, I don't pass anything on. But anybody, in, in reality, most of these don't, don't care. They could they could pass their input back through. They don't have to, they don't have to hide it. You know, they could just make, make that out of it. Um, now, I don't, I guess this one changes. Let's look at the sound. Okay. Um, that is probably sound view, right? Okay. So he does notify settings changed. All right. Okay, on change of this, update the stage. Um, play, where's the selector? Picker, okay. Um, text, dot tag, tag. Okay, so we're giving each each text a label. Stage dot selected tune. What happens when that updates? Oh, I guess it doesn't matter because we just call play on whatever the current one is. Yeah, he just remembers selected tune and looks for it. So the the gap we have is I would like I would like to hmm. Data flow, that's the word I'm looking for. All right, let's go to pipeline. Uh 
Okay, so here's here's pipeline. It knows the potential sources, transforms, and sinks, and the active ones. Okay, a single input, a single a list of transforms, and a sink, single output sink. Okay, and these things. Yeah, yeah. I think I've made that distinction that that these ones I've called analysis that they are sinks and they just um, consume the input and do something with it. But um, like, there's no real reason. Like, I could definitely want this one, like sound and then Parsons code. I could definitely want both those, you know. I would look at the Parsons code, say, these two look similar. How similar do they sound? And play them, you know. That that means that I'm doing something kind of artificial. But anyway, the pipeline, he, yeah, here, here's the deal. The active source, when you call process, which is what happens when anybody updates, like the filter updates, it calls something that triggers process running. So process says, go to the, go to the current source, which is either file input or manual input, and create the packet, which is what I'm calling the thing that travels through, um, and then take the packet and reduce packet with transform, meaning basically apply each transform, and the result of that goes into the next one, and uh, finally consume it in the active sync and, and do what you want there. But... Um, you know, so I've got a very linear graph, you know, which is which is fine as a pipeline of of actions, and um, but I think what the transforms see this is well okay yeah so let's say let's say we're set let me set up a different a different picture let's turn on filter quantize we'll turn this off okay and we'll turn filter on okay so. I open a file, I quantize it, which means uh, restrict the beats to quarter notes instead of allowing smaller notes. I have the title, and then I have some sync. Okay. If I change the title, okay, um, this list is very short now. It was 39 things, but now it's restricted. Okay. And as I as I type, um, it... it restricts it even further, you know, although this is about as short as it's going to be because they all have the same word. But let's go back a little. Gal, we picked up a galoon. No, there it is. Yeah, galoon. Okay, so um, when we do this, this thing is actually reloading the file because it's it's rerunning that whole process. Um, which is expedient, but um, not so helpful for this cluster being in here. Because I would like cluster to be like the filter. E even the filter, I would like, what I really like is a data flow perspective would say, um, when you open the file, it, it produces some an output and says, I'm ready to feed this to whoever's listening. And then this thing should listen and say, oh, I see you've changed let me let me update my thing. And this thing says, oh, I see you changed. Let me update my thing. And then when you change a letter here, this one should say, oh, I've changed. My input's still the same, but I've changed. So my output changes. I shouldn't have to redo all the earlier stages. Um, so I, and, and I think in particular for this cluster view filter, you know, when it, when it opens, I'll turn off the ease for now. Um, when the file opens, I would like this thing to populate this graph. And given that these two are initially selected, it should only let those two flow through to the to the next stage. Um, but um, if the input changes, then it should redraw the graph, and all all bets are off. You know, you start over. Um, so I, I had this optimization in mind earlier, you know, and I just took the easy way out and, and just said, well, well, just redo everything. Um, but you can see the reason, let's see this one. Um, it's relatively slow to calculate this melody average. It's 
doing a lot of work. Okay. And I, did I miss? Okay. So here we go. So it's, it's a few seconds. I hope there's not an issue. Okay. Um, but it's, it's long enough that it maybe even deserves a, a, a rolling, you know, a, a better time indicator. But um, that one's really slow. And if I change something above, that whole thing, that's the reason this is hidden behind a button is because I don't want to recalculate until you're good and ready and you've selected it and you're, and you're going to do it. So I, I don't know. Um, I don't think it's, it's not the immediate problem. Well, it's going to come pretty quick. Maybe I shouldn't say it's not immediate. Where's this to do? Okay. So where's cluster view going to get this cluster? Well, the only time it gets anything, it's really the stage that gets it. Maybe that's the thing. Hmm. So my, where I was, um, yeah, the package contains, it's basically um, the tunes and the f transformation ones modify the tunes and the, the sync ones just display it in some, you know, some local transformation and display it. Um, let's open packet. Well, if I can type. Okay. So, uh, right. So a packet is tunes, which is a list of individual tunes and it's metadata, which is a list of strings and, what happens is every stage that's involved, let's do Parsons code, we'll quantize, we'll filter. Um, okay, every stage that's involved, oh, interesting. Um, it's, it's supposed to put out metadata. I'm not sure we're seeing it here. Okay, we are here. Okay, so input file was null on ABC, quantized one quarter note, title contains gal. We have 10 tunes that qualify. Here's their names. Okay, so this is the metadata. Each stage adds a little bit of information to it. Um, so that's, that's okay. I, I don't know what to say went through pipeline. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's a discrete, thing going through the pipeline. It's not a um, bunch of oil or something. All right. Uh, so I don't know. I think we can get some of this work done. It, it's reasonable to me that there is a cluster. Um, and if it's visible, if it's non-empty, we should, we should make it available to the stage, because the stage is going to need to know it. Um, but what happens from there, I'm not so sure. So let's let's get that much in. I don't think it's um, kind of where we left off. I'm going to say there's, there's some state that the view needs, which is what's your cluster. And, um, e, and we'll make... E must be hashable. Okay. And I think optional. All right. So I'm going to say, um, all right, let's, let's say, um, cluster view. Okay. Uh, just to get something in there. All right. So the border, I want the padding inside the border. I'll take that while I got it. Uh, all right. So this could be nil because there might not be a cluster yet, which in our case there isn't. So if cluster is not nil, then we're going to try and draw the dendrogram. Okay. And ooh, cluster view. Hmm. Well, that's going to make this carry through. Can a stage pick up the result from any of the previous ones? Um, it, yeah, in, in effect, 
Um, let's see. Let me um, let me get this thing worked through first, so it runs again. Okay. Now we're we gonna have to. Oh dear. Um, okay, I'm going down a bad path. <laughs> All right, stop that. Okay, let's let's just make it end for now. Now is that gonna work? Maybe in trouble. Oh, I guess I don't need to be generic at this point. I, I'm okay with that. No, something's funny. Cluster view cannot specialize non-generic type cluster view. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so um, the stage, basically, it gets the, it, it's really a pipeline. So um, put two filters in. So this one produces a packet, and then it applies the title filter, which produces a packet that's a subset in this case. Then it applies the quantized filter, which takes each tune out of the packet runs an algorithm to to omit a bunch of notes and then produces a new packet that's got those you know reduced tunes in it and then parsing code gets the result of all that so um in the sense of i mean any of these could be the one it any filter or input could be what the the sync sees okay so any source any transform could be feeding into the um, the sink, whatever the sink is. And, you know, you can rearrange that anytime and all that. So, all right. Um, now, what we should see here, this, notice our picture is not there anymore. Okay, so I... Well, I think we're doing the right thing. Let's see, that was um, cluster view. Try to get these too close. All right, so if it's not nil, well, how is it gonna be non-nil? Only if somebody creates one. Um, I don't know if I want to or not. I mean, we could put I think we got rid of these two. Um, we could put. I mean, we, we could take this cluster and and make it the result. that would take it out of here and maybe that would be a step forward it would it would get this hard-coded cluster out okay so i think that's probably a good step okay and he knows cluster Right, and that's what we need. So we're going to pass that in. Um, let's take it out and put it in here. Let's see. I'm going to try and do this as a closure. Can I do that? Do I have to say nothing? Well, does that work? No. Cannot convert. Hmm. 
Oh, friends. Okay, so I'm making an immediately executable function. I think there's a way to do this. <laughs> Missing argument. Okay, I don't want any arguments. I don't know if I just do that. Right, so now we have a cluster. So if I run it, we should see this one by, no. <laughs> well, we'll see it, but only kind of accidentally. Okay, now there is a cluster in in the stage, no, in the cluster view. And it says, okay, I'll, I'll pass it on and we can display it. Um, and that may be a better gap there. I don't know if it helped anything or not. Um, all righty, so... So what I've done then is I took the initialization from dendogram view and I want to pass this in as, as a cluster. And I'm going to, I'm going to use this for now. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to use it for now. I'm going to take this stuff out. And I'll just comment for a moment. This should equal cluster, the, the parameter. Okay, so we're going to pass that into dendigram view. And that comes here. Okay, now we should... Oh. <laughs> okay, yes, I'm willing to unwrap it because I know it's not nil. Okay, so now I'm forming that tree. That's not being done in the dendogram view anymore. So I can take this out completely. Okay, I'm storing the stage, I'm storing the cluster, I'm updating some other stuff. Okay, maybe this can come down a little. Okay, and I'm kind of ready to go. All right. Um, again, I'll just run. Uh, I, I hope this is coming <laughs> in a good direction. <laughs> but I know I'm going to hit a wall, too. Okay, so I got my cluster. It looks fine. Um, let's, let's take that. So we're going to uh, create cluster in cluster view. Up. Um, pass it to dendogram view. Okay, we'll push remote and go. All right, now, well, someday when it comes back. Oh. Okay, I guess we're a little far afield from that. Uh, let's update our to-do. So we're going to make um, cluster view own a cluster and pass it to dendogram view. All right. So I think I want to make Colossus uh, dendogram view. Let's make that generic over the type. And uh, I'm going to spell it out a hashable element. And then this, this really is int, but this is element. And this is element. Now, I think this file should be happy, but cluster view should be a little upset. Okay, so I think we're still int based here. Let's, let's do that here. Dendogram view cannot replace connector with connector of int. OK. 
connectors.build cluster. Cluster of element. Is that going to be okay? Okay, connector dot top and all that stuff. What is that? What's okay? Um, well, I think it's really. It's really, I think we want to make it custom string convertible. <laughs> I, I don't know if that int will be that by default. We can extend it. Wave dot elements. I don't know what this thing is. Maybe my ints don't. Form to custom string convertible allows you to customize description. Okay, we'll do it that way. Let's let's try this. It's a string describing. All right, let's put that in here. It's not any happier. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. N now I'm kind of guessing, well, I don't think int is gonna be custom string convertible by default. So I think there's still gonna be single complaints. No complaints. Okay, so our cluster looks good, um, unchanged. <laughs> All right. Um, so, well, I think we've done this small step that says we made our dendrogram view specific to our type. I, I think. That's probably fine for now. Um, we're pushing it out, out, out. At some point, we're going to make a decision and probably here and say like, hey, it's got to be a cluster of tunes or packets or something. Okay. Probably of tunes. All right. Now... Again, let's let's capture what we've done here a little bit. So we passed, uh, I guess we updated the uh, dendrogram view to be generic.
Okay. Okay, I think we've done that. Now what do we say? Dendrogram view and main pipe. Okay, so I'm going to defer this problem of how we're going to make this thing work in the pipeline. We're just going to address this vertical one. I don't know if I care about this one yet. I think I'll push down horizontal because I think, well, 40 nodes, I think will still be readable. We'll see if I'm right. Okay, um, vertical size depends on number of elements. Okay, so let's go back to dendrogram view. I'm gonna pull that over a little. All right, so dendrogram view, we know at the bottom here, we're saying frame height. Okay, so, well, I guess my first thing is to just take that off and let it be whatever height it wants to be. See how that looks. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> um, it looks like it kind of took the cluster view, but not the title element. Um, And this is because we're doing positioning. It, it doesn't care whether it's in or out. It just puts it where we tell it. And I think it's default height. It's not going to count them, maybe. But we, we can get that height. Um, we're doing it off of, well, where we get our input? Cluster stage and cluster. OK. We definitely can ask cluster how many elements you have. Um, and so that's a function of cluster. Um, let me put this back height. Let's make it, um, well, we got our Y scale times the number of elements plus some factor. Okay, so let's make it cluster dot elements dot count times y scale plus I'm gonna guess 50. Well, maybe that should be on this. The Z stack. Elements.count. I don't know why it was complaining about that. It still is. Can I convert int to double? Yes, go ahead. What if I do that the other way around? Is this ah, double? No, it really does want that. Okay. <sighs> okay, the height should be better. You know, that's that's 
acceptable. I'd kind of like it one more. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, though. Let's do padding. Bottom. Hopefully that's the right qualifier. Okay, I, I think we're good. Maybe a little, a little high, but I, I think it's clear enough that it's there. Uh, y scale divided by two. Just see if we can tweak it a little. Okay. And I don't worry about, I'm letting the diagram part come along for the right. It's the same height as this piece. Okay. So what happens is we have a V stack and inside it, it has the title and then it has, um, a Z stack with the lines, the elements, and the diagram. Um, let's see, is that right? H stack. Okay, so it's an H stack of those two things, but it's going to say, well, I've got to make the height big enough for this thing anyway. It'll it'll force this one up to that height, basically. All right, so we make height. Cluster view depend on number of elements. Okay. Right. Cluster the tens. Now it's going to get tricky. Uh, let's see, cluster stage. Okay, right now he does nothing. He knows nothing. He can't. We can't give him other information. He's supposed to know. Given what he knows, transform this. All right, let's find filter I feel like yeah I think I think maybe this maybe this cluster needs to come from that Hmm. So cluster, let's see, who owns? I think Dendigram View owns the selection right now. Hmm. So maybe should this come from there? <sighs> that was cluster stage.
Hmm, I'm just not so sure how to how to balance between these objects. The stage. Where's cluster stage coming from? It's passed in. Should the stage know the cluster? I, I think maybe it should. Now, what happens to it in here? We ask for the leaves. Okay. Um I'm kind of thinking maybe stage owns cluster and selected elements. And then we rely on the stage to do some work for us. Cluster dot leaves dot enumerated would just be stage dot leaves or something. And cluster dot connector. That's the field. Yeah. All right. Um, so we're going to make stage know the cluster. And the selected elements. <sighs> if we can. <laughs> All right, so cluster stage, who creates this? Maybe it can't. Cluster stage, he gets it, he gets it, he creates it. Yeah, that's not gonna know that. And the view gets it, cluster view gets it. That seems reasonable. Hmm. Well, what's going to update cluster, right? It's got to be, it's got to be the con, the dendrogram view. Well, where's this created? It's only created here. Oh, excuse me. Well, it it shouldn't, right? It, the, I think the real thing is like the stage. I think the stage should know it because it gets the packet and the packet tells it the tunes and the tunes are where we're supposed to be creating the cluster from. Right now we're hard coding it to ints, but you know, it's really supposed to be a bunch of tunes. And so nobody has access to that until, until they get called with this. And so I guess this thing should be able to I mean it should create the cluster I guess that means it probably should own it oh gosh here's filter stage again 
Selected text. Okay, so he, he's got the filter text. He's a little backward. He's got the filter text, and then he can apply it. But he's applying it to the packet. Nobody's just holding holding the the cluster around. Okay. Um I guess, does the stage create the cluster? The answer should be yes. <laughs> um, whether it has enough information at this point, I don't know. We've got a, we've put a lot of pieces together, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So who creates clusters? Well, connectors does a lot of it. What does he get? He well, he he's given a cluster. He builds this, so he doesn't create a cluster. Um, priority matrix. That's our algorithm. Okay. So. Let's see who's calling this. Okay, here's a test. We create a matrix with a function element distance. Okay, in our case, our tests have done ints. All right. All right, we'll create a matrix. We'll create the cluster from the matrix. and add them in. And then given a matrix, connectors, no, he's given a cluster. What's matrix do? Matrix to add. There's the five elements. Okay. Okay, create the matrix. You, okay, create the matrix with the element distance, add in a cluster for each individual element, and then ask this for the clustered stuff back. Uh, seems a little um, unwieldy. I mean, really, like this pattern, this zero one is coming because this is the first and the second coming in. And it always is going to be an increasing list of these things. Um, I don't know if we have, well, you can kind of see it in our cluster view, right? We've one, two, three, four, five, you know, we've just given them sequential numbers. But I guess the cluster stage is going to create the cluster. Yeah, that's right. Connectors, they're really presentation. Well, they're, they're a little conceptual, but they're, they're structured for presentation. Um, and that they build off of, you give them a cluster, and then they compute the dendigrams for the whole cluster. But it's this priority matrix that's, that's the heart of the algorithm. Uh, wherever it went. Oh, proximity. Okay. It, it strikes me that instead of these individual ads, really you're coming in with a list of elements and you would be happy to have the parity matrix create the clusters and 
assign sequence numbers and all that stuff. Um, I don't know if that's a diversion. I also noticed these examples were using zero one, the the original algorithm in here, I'm pretty sure says first sequence number is zero. Um, and yet our our data we're running with is one based. So I'm sure I've messed something up there because of that. But um I think I think the algorithm, let's see. I go back to these tests. I I guess what I would like is um, I don't I don't think these ads are helping anything, are they? Well, let's see what who calls ad. It's oh, it's in here too. Okay, so well, I guess we were testing it was helping test, make sure that its own internal function worked. So that's not terrible, but I would really just as soon pass in the function and a list of elements and have it append them in the first place. Um, let's see who's calling this. I imagine it's only tests at this point. Well, this thing is screwy. Some tests are gonna... Okay. I guess I can look for this. There's, I don't, okay, maybe this is right. All right, there's a lot of, a lot of these in the tests, but no, no real usage. So it tells me, it tells me proximity matrix right now is not um, connected into anything at this point. All right, so I guess I'm spinning a little. So I think what I'm going to say is let's let's make proximity matrix easier to work with and then call it. So if proximity matrix, I think it should, I think it should allow a list of elements array of element okay and if you do that well can I make it empty Th that's a step here now I can modify some of these tests Okay, so adds a cluster. I think I actually want to test that one. Um, I, I want to make sure add and remove do their job. So I'm okay to be empty here. I don't know if I can do this. I bet I can. It should be able to work out that that's an empty array of ants. Okay. And same thing here. I explicitly uh, want a particular element in there. Okay. These should pass. So, what do I know? <laughs> Um, how, 
would this not work? Sorry, I think. Why do I keep losing this? It it must be something on that, yeah. Um, but I don't see. Okay, let me. Let me revert. Yeah, let's just. See what the differences are. Okay, I added it. And I don't care about that. And called it. Okay, so I can revert those two, no problem. Okay, it wasn't our last change. Oh, uh, let's see. Set one three two three one two is not equal to connector ID three 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 one two two three one should be equal seven five seven five branch zero. Huh. Um. I'm gonna back up a little. Let's let's make sure. Have I not been running tests with these check-ins? Um, let's switch back to end of yesterday. Cancel, cancel. I think all I have is my to do, which I want to keep. Oh, what's this one? Well, I don't want that one either. Why did that run? Okay, let me... Let's do a clean. Oh, I probably should run tests instead of running it, but that's okay. All right, that still looks okay. Unit tests. This is weird because we have not touched this one in a while. Okay, I'm going to back up. yesterday
Is that going to stop that? Clean test results, clean build folder, and run your tests. Well, this is discouraging. Let's switch back here. This processing files things. I don't know if that's important to wait for or not. Okay. Clean tests. Clean builds. Run. This is weird. I mean, I can believe I might not have run something for the last few times, but I can't believe I haven't run it at all. Okay, let's go back to the 17th. We'll kind of narrow in, hopefully. Switch to that one. I don't know which one we're on over here. 417. Okay. Well, all right. So sometime this week. <laughs> um, I think maybe this is about halfway. Okay, so that's Tuesday. All right, so 6A0 worked. Yeah, maybe that left right flip. Usually I have so much scrap paper here. <laughs> okay. So, 6A08 worked. Left, right, flip. Yeah, let's let's try this one.
so we're s okay six a o eight is good a five six is good. Start of yesterday. Okay, well, so it's yesterday. I don't remember where we looked already. I think your intuition was here. Okay, that's good. So this is F96, D6, D. Okay. Is that all connector tests? Ten failures. Okay, so F nine six is bad. Well it's I guess this is the only other select initially selected empty set. All right, so F96, let's see what's in there. our level stuff. Wait, is this connectors? Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, it's the left-right flip. I can't believe I haven't run tests in this time. Well, okay, I don't think it's, I think that was cleaning up our debugging stuff more than anything. Um, but that was doing the flipping stuff, okay. But we we did touch connector very clearly here. Um, I think it's right. So if our values are 1.0 minus that, I think if we see them as being flipped, I guess we'll manually verify, but 
Oh man, I cannot believe I didn't run tests in this time. Woof. Okay. Yeah, because we did not just touch UI code, we touched content code as well. And let's get back here before I forget where they are. Okay. And test build and run. We expect 10 failures now. But I guess if we see 1.0 minus instead of just X, then we've got something to go by. All right. The one, two, three is the same. Level 0.75, top, tune sim branch, zero. X 25, Y zero, X 0.25. Right, okay, I think. I think those should be zeros. Okay, so the branch on top. Okay, so we got C1, C2. His distance is 0.75. His distance is one. It's a little funny. Um, okay. The level 0.75 comes from that. That's fine. His length... Sorry, his, his X... Was his length right? 0.75.75. Yeah, so... He should be drawn from the left now. So I think 0, 0.0 here for both of these is correct because it's the two child links or elements should be on the left. <laughs> um, 0. 0.25 to 25%. Yeah, so 0. 0.25 is the, it's one minus the 0. 0.75. So before the line was being drawn, um, think that's giving you from hmm is it the right let, let me see if this number looks good I, I think these should yeah okay so let's make sure this looks this passes I mean our, our elements on the left our, our pure elements the plain cluster dot elements should all have x of zero now where they would have been whatever distance they were minus, you know, from from the right before. Okay, so in this case, 1 minus 0.75 is, is 0.25, where that came from. Okay, so this one, uh, 1, 2, and 3 are on... Wait, connectors.build contents... Two things in actual. But I think we'll see, yeah, X0, X0 versus 25. That's kind of the same situation for 1 and 2. Oh, yeah, here we go. Element ID is 1, 2, 4. So this is 1 and 2. Those should be 0. This one is one, two, three, four, five. So his bottom branch, right? This one, X should be 0.75 now. Okay. X 0.75 because he's picking up from here and picking up the distance from 0.75 to 875 is 0.125. 
this one should be zero and his length is the full thing and I think that one will be correct okay Ugh. Zero for the two, three, and four. Two, three, four is point five. Point five. One to one and five being added in. Okay, one should be at zero. Um is one on the bottom? Length 0.25. No, I guess one's on the top. Well, somebody should be starting at 0.5 and somebody should be starting at zero. I think the first one is the zero. Yeah, zero and point five. Okay. Point five. Okay, one, two, seven. Well, that one we know is zero. Point seven five. Then these should be zero. Um, three, four, eight. Three, four is the leaves. Okay. And then we have five, six, nine. Three, four, five, six, eight, nine. So that's these two clusters. This one's 0.75, this one's 0.75. So I think both of these should start at 0.75. Yep, okay. At least I'm mentally in sync with what they're trying to do. Okay, this one is everything. So hmm. What's he connecting? One, two. One, two, start at point seven five. And then the rest of these guys started at point eight seven five. 5.875, okay. Okay. I guess they should have been fixed when we implemented flipping horizontally. And that was kind of like bad programmer here. Did not do what he's supposed to. Okay. Well, we're definitely off the view side now, so hopefully I can keep that straight in my head for a while. All right. So proximity matrix. Now I feel better I can add that that generic capability. So um, I said this would be nothing. And this needs to accept an elements of array of element starts out empty, defaults to empty. Okay. 
and that should pass. <laughs> Okay, we'll do a little more. Okay, this matrix should start empty. Distance from cluster to itself. Okay, that I think I want to... All right, these, these should both be okay. Okay, the proximity matrix, take an array of elements to cluster. Okay, now this one, I want these elements well I think this really should be zero one. Let's let's do that first. So one to two should be zero to one, where we're feeding in the sequence number and then the value. All right. So this test should still pass because they're just names, labels. All right. Now I want to say I'm passing in values three and five. And I don't have to do this anymore. Now it should fail. Okay. And what I'm expecting is, well, basically this should be happening in my constructor up here. Okay, so... I want to say elements dot enumerated dot for each. And I'm going to do something like this. Okay, so I will inline. That this is L, um, dollar zero. Well, no, let's say element, and this is number. And enumerated produces number element in there. Okay, so we are. Save that function. Okay, what's in there? Matrix has no element to add. Oh, is it is it really self dot add? So it's matrix dot append. I don't want to call this function because I'm still in the constructor. So I'm calling the lower level function on matrix. All right, so now this should pass. This one, hmm, all right, let's rename again. One goes to zero, nobody references one. Two goes to one. Hmm. Oh, I'm only doing elements. Okay, let's pull this one out. Okay, zero, one, three is two, and he is three. Okay, so I can initialize. Well, let's make sure this works first, and then I know this is really 
cluster four, cluster five. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So this should be a safe rename. Oh, no. I just. <sighs> okay. So this was 10. 10 to 20 is really 4 to 5. That's 5 to 4. We'll rename some things in a minute. Okay. All right, now I think I should be able to put these in like this, three, six, one, four. Three, six, one, four, and these should come out. And this should be well, I have a look up. I can I find here. I guess I could expect that I guess I'm really trying to test the distance function right I'm setting up a little bit of an artificial cluster though Let's say, um, zero, one, three is two, that. Okay, that is private. I don't know if that's enough to let my test have access. All right, so this test should still pass. I'm putting these in, forcing them to a certain thing and then checking their distance. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's adding in those one, two, three, four, five. Clusters for each, add them. So I think if I, well, I'm gonna say it. There's, this should be lower by one. So let's let's add the elements seven, one, four, fifty. Okay, so those indexes it should still be five things. C one, C two is the best pair, but now this should be reduced by one, zero, and three. So three 
and 4 are the closest values, so that should still be true. Okay, and now this is not needed. Okay. Oh. All right. This is just the element three. I'm going to move a little faster. So I trust it. To... We're doing higher level things now, so I think I can trust it more. Elements three and four. That's the equivalent of adding those, yes. Result elements, okay, so we don't have to translate anything. All right. Sequence number two, because zero, one, and then two comes next. All right. Yeah, so we can swap the order of these. Add the values, call clustered, check the results, 1, 2, 3, 10, 11, 12, yeah, all right. Expected one, executed one test. Okay, let's run them all. The Mitty Matrix. Uh, Okay, now I don't I don't want people to, to do this by default, I think. So let me build. There should be one or two sites that care about this. Maybe not even that if we didn't connect anything up. Okay, run these again. There it is. Well, I think we just missed a case. That should be element three. The four should become zeros. Okay, now, who uses this? Shouldn't, well, some tests do. Okay, yeah, and we do. Let's, let's check these tests. Yep, yep. Yeah, that test kind of needs it. Because we're sort of artificially clustering it. Yeah, but I think I don't think regular code should call it. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this out. And I think this is kind of the same situation. The it, the algorithm needs to do it, but the tests are just checking that the algorithm can do its job. Right? So they can come out too. Okay. Um Test. 
because this was used before anybody who wanted to create a cluster uh, proximity matrix had to call add a bunch of times. Now that's being done for you, so you shouldn't really need access to this anymore. But the algorithm does use it, so I can't just um, make them completely go away. And my test is going to check it, so I don't want to make it private because then I can't get to it in my test. <sighs> All righty. Uh, let's see. So we um, make add and remove no longer public. All righty. Okay, um, I think it's time for a break. We'll just take uh, three minutes or so and um, get a drink or whatever and come back. And I think now we're kind of ready to hook up, uh, make, make, somehow make our, our pipeline work with a bunch of tunes in a priority matrix instead of uh, only ints for tests. All right, so see you in a few minutes. Okay, welcome back. Let's see. So back to the cluster. So this is the first moment a cluster stage knows what the tunes are. So um, make input dot tunes. Yeah. Okay. So I guess somewhere we must. Well, cluster stage may not have a test because it's so simple so far. Yeah, that's cluster itself. All right, so let's add some tests. Okay, how are we going to tell this thing's doing its job? <sighs> well, I guess it should know its cluster. Um... If I call it transform, I expect that the cluster is there. Is that reasonable? I guess. Hmm. All right. Um. I guess we're going to say that. So let's do this. Um, test. What's this? Uh, knows its cluster after transform. Yeah. Well, let's start even simpler. Um, no cluster before any transforms. Okay. Um, yeah, this is this is going to get sticky. <laughs> Surprise! All right. Um, I want to say that cluster stage, just empty stage dot cluster is nil and i don't know i like the assert equal to be like that anyway all right and this has no presence okay so there's got to be a cluster hmm
cluster of tunes is not converted to a hashable. Interesting. Okay. Optional. Is that right? Well, tune does not conform to hashable. Okay, let's open tune. Well, isn't this going to be fun? Um, okay. Oh, come on. You're supposed to volunteer to make it. It's some weird little method you have to do. First struct, all methods must conform to hash. I don't think we're a struct, right? We're a class. Yep. Right. Implement these two things. Okay, this is tune. Do we have equatable already? We do. Okay. Um, X. Well, we need to do its fields. I don't know. Metadata. Let's see. That's. I don't know if it's going to let us just do this. We've got the metadata, the parts. And measure map, what's measure transform? Okay, that function I'm not gonna include in the hash. I just wanted to include what equality does. Really, it's just parts. Okay, we'll just do parts. I think we got to require that that is hashable. Part. and measure. Okay. Okay, enum conformance is its associated values conform. Okay, so measure is equatable but not yet hashable. Uh. He's a struct. If all his fields are hashable, he's hashable. Equatable.
please be down to the bottom rhythm okay I'll put this closer to equals actually I think he's finally down to a Structure that you can work with. <laughs> okay. Meter, rhythm, or int. Okay, so meter should be hashable. Okay. Measure, meter, or symbol. Let's see if symbol is hashable. <laughs> no. Okay. And this mostly just says I haven't put any of these things in maps yet. Uh, symbol is hashable. He's a note or a rhythm. Well, rhythm we did. Note. Hmm. Tune does not conform to hashable. Hash into must be public. Okay, this is progress. Symbol does not conform to hashable. Because note, no part, measured parts and endings. Don't think we got endings yet. He's end to part. Oh, he may have to be explicit. All right. Um, I don't know if he needs to be a class. And I don't know if note needs to be a class. I mean, on the surface, I would kind of expect it to not be. Um, are we doing anything with it that's weird? It's got a lot of fields, but it doesn't modify itself. Okay, so... Um, Endings does not conform to hashable. I'm. Hmm. Cluster stage. Where's. Cluster stage tests. Why are we I feel like I've done a lot of stuff, but I'm not sure I'm getting to the bottom of it. Where's cluster stage? Here we are. Cluster of tune Like why does anybody compare can concern themselves with it? Part enum measure and endings. All right, endings I feel like should be a struct. Is that going to work? Right. Uh, 
Okay, he can't be struck because he changes. Okay, symbol has note. But I don't think it changes once it's set. Times produces a new note. Key produces a new note. These don't. These don't. None of these look like they modify to me, so I'm going to try this as a struct. <sighs> Dreading that it may bust a hundred things, but... Um, but he should be hashable now. Note does not conform. Is that pitch? Is also a class. But again, we don't modify it. Okay, so this did not complain. Note is not hashable. Okay, it's got a pitch. Oh, pitch does not need to be. Adjustment in character accidental and key. That's an enum full of little constants, so he shouldn't be a problem. <sighs> Key is a struct. I guess he could be hashable too. Mode. Okay. Note we did. He does modify, so he does require work. He used to offer to do it for me. Uh, um. I forget where we started this mad journey. Okay, Hasher. Note does not conform to hashable. Okay, why not? He has an int, a character, an accidental. I think we... Well, he can be hashable. Since he's just a bunch of values. Okay. All right, I think we'll get a pass in here somewhere. Mostly these should go away. Okay, our test was cluster starts out nil and cluster is nil. All right. Um, Make 
Oh, tune hashable. Mashable. Give cluster stage and a new cluster to start with. Okay, sorry. Too long. All right, so, and this is where I'm not, I'm, they, I think there's a couple ways we can go. What I'm going to try is if, if a packet comes in, we're going to set the cluster. Um, all right. And has cluster after transform. Okay, so let's take this. Okay, if we call, oh, we'll have to create a tune. Um, I'm sure we've got one we can. This is probably good enough. Start out empty. Okay, so we'll just create an empty tune. And we will call stage.transform of packet. Tunes is tunes of tunes array of tune. And then metadata is Oops, what's in there? Okay, this should fail. Okay, um, because we haven't done anything with it yet. All right, so now we've got input dot tunes. Um, And I think, gosh, I haven't looked at tunes in a while. I think we can treat it as an array. Yeah, it's a sequence. So. Uh, I don't know. It's. Okay, this should be a ray of tune. Oh. Element could not be inferred. 
underscore. No. I don't know. I feel like it should, this should be private set. We should be able to see those tunes. Hmm. We go to a lot of trouble to make it appear like an array. That should be a ray of tune. Oh. Tunes, tunes. Okay. That should be a ray of tune. Thank you. All right. Now, cluster, proximity matrix. Element distance is going to be a challenge, but tunes input dot tunes dot tunes we know hashable hashable to distance. Well, it's got to be an element of type tune. Okay. No, I could swear we did this. Um, tune distance takes tune one of tune, tune two of tune, returns a distance. Okay. Distance is a double. Is it on Parsons code? Distance of equal tunes is zero. Okay, so um, we can ask the distance from one Parsons code to another. Given the notes, <laughs> okay. Um, well, if you're given a tune. Okay, um, let's put an empty function in for now. So, well, no, we can put two in distance. We can let this be, let this be wrong for a minute. Okay. So we got a matrix. And then we can say cluster equals matrix dot clustered. Here's a cluster of tune. Okay. 
and return input. <laughs> oh. Okay, make cluster stage retain the cluster corresponding to the tunes from the input. Now, tunes do not know their Parsons code. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to. I keep taking expedient ways out, and I don't think that's going to be good in the long run. I, I think maybe a tune should know its Parsons code, but if you gave me two tunes. I could I could figure out the distance between them. I mean tune distance seems like a tune problem, not a not a transform problem. And I don't remember how to How to specify that? Okay. So if tune defines tune distance, how do we get to this function um, here? And I don't know if this will work. Like that. Cannot ver ver tune sim tune sim tune do double to expect the argument. Wait a minute. Tune tune to distance. To expected argument type, tune, tune to distance. Tune instance cannot be used on type tune. It's fine. Oh, maybe it's static. Oh, or is that static public? I was getting backwards. Okay. Are you happier? Yes. Okay, I don't use that. Prefer to use extension access modifiers. Oh, they won't public up here. Prefer not to. I think I've got conflicting. I mean, that's a pretty hard roll there. Static function tune distance. 
Now this cluster stage does not reference this anymore. Okay. So tune distance. Let's put a test on tune. Well, I guess we've um, uh, tune stage builds a cluster tune provides the distance function. Okay, uh, tune. There used to be a way to get to the test from here. I don't know if that was only, or I don't know if that was done anymore. Focus to editor. Jump to next counterpart. Control. Co Command a barrel. There it is. Okay. All right. So I guess we want to assert Um, let's see, so, uh, function test, tune distance uses Parsons code distance. Okay. Tune, distance, tune one, tune two. All right, let's go find a Parsons code example. something okay equals well we just did that Parts is parts cancel. Character to part. Okay. Part is measures. Oh. All right. Let me search again. Tune equals tune builder. We can do. Oh, here we go. Parse tune. This is the kind of thing I want. No header, and I'm just going to take these notes. FGA. Tune 2. FED. Don't need this. 
Um, Notes two is symbols. Yes. This is not the best way to do this. I, I guess I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm hurting anything. It's almost like a, a property test. Okay, so I've got the Parsons for these things. Distance. Um, what is called that distance? Since you have to put the class there, we know it's a tune. All right, tune distance from tune one to two should be Parsons one distance to Parsons two. Really? Distance from tune one to two should be the distance from one to two. Distance from two one to three should be the distance to Parsons three. And then you can probably guess this one. One, two, one, three, two, three. Okay, so I'm sort of picking some random things. Let's put another note in here. Um, this one, just because I know the example works uh, on Parsons. I mean, I could probably hand calculate them. Yeah, it really is kind of a triangulation. It's, it's, um, Well, it's kind of a property test. I guess I think of it as property testing to say that if you do Parsons and you do this, they're going to be equal um, is sort of a constraint I want to apply over all possible tunes. And I'm checking it by checking a few simple cases, which it's going to fail. So, I mean, we at least have something there, but my implementation is going to look a lot like this. So that's why I'm a little bit... Um, uh, you know, everything's 0.5 according to this. Okay, so let's implement it. So we will return that, but we have to calculate Parsons. Okay, so we're we're calculating that there. It, it it makes me unhappy because Parsons is a pure function of the tune, and you know we will be redundantly calculating this, which is going to slow things down on a theoretically order n cubed algorithm. So it's a touch slow to start with. <sighs> 
I don't know if... Well, I think tune is... None of these modify tune, I don't think. Return a characteristic, return a part, return some measures, return some measures. So it could be calculated statically at some point. It's just Parsons code is kind of... Well, nobody... I won't say that. I was going to say nobody uses it, but it's not. That's not true. It's 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 used quite a bit in this kind of application. You could probably define other things just as well, but um, uh, I don't know. So let's see, make sure this passes before I go too far. Time's up for the day, for the week. Okay, so um, it, it's. You know, it's got some theoretical slowness. We haven't done enough to see that the inefficiency is there. Um, but this is another place where we're doing something that slows down this algorithm potentially. So um, on the other hand, we we have clustered these things and uh, that's worth something. So let's commit this. Um, define tune.distance using Parsons code dot distance exactly I, I know there's other places we're doing stuff well our whole ar algorithm there are like n squared or n squared log n or something like that algorithms out there that we could be using so we have you know a pretty significant one we can change all right so commit this and we'll call this our wrap for the day for the week um, I should be back Monday 2 to 4 30 p.m. Eastern Time or 6 to 8.30 p.m. UTC. And uh, thanks for joining today. And Mudshark, thanks again for your help and advice. Take care. Bye-bye.